Morning regenerators. <clears throat> I've got a bare bit of paddock here. It's been holding paddock and I have had a, a lame horse in here for a couple of months. So it's rained, there's no grass in it and it's probably in the worst state it has ever been in. We had lawn grub, which is army worm, um, this summer as well. And it, this has just never, ever, ever had the chance to recover. So I thought I'd do some multi-species cover crop, bit of bird seed that I've gathered. It is. And my trusty rake, because I'm really posh and I've got all the agricultural equipment in the world. So a bit of elbow grease, a bit of seed, bit of raking and uh, I should get the job done in probably about 20 minutes I reckon. So there you have it guys, raked, multi-species sown, little holding paddock, um, there's very little topsoil, it is on t directly on top of rock. So I'm not holding my breath, but doing something is better than doing nothing. And uh, it's given me a bit of a Sunday morning workout too. Two for the price of one, hey? <laughs> Regenerators, I thought I'd just do a bit of an update. Um, when I finished raking that night, we had hmm, about 12 mil of rain. So all the little bits of soil that was left with all the little carbon bits and everything sort of got all pushed down and the seeds have been open exposed I'm just using this to top dress I'm not really using it to fertilize or anything I just need to cover the seeds this is also on level one compaction so I'm not holding up much hope but we'll see what happens and there's no grass there's no nothing so I may as well try something
back in the multi-species cover crop section um, with my combine harvester now. Parasecators. What has happened is we've got four or five days of rain happening. Probably half of this is good to harvest, it's ready to go. Half isn't, however, I'm going to lose half if I leave it out in the rain. Um, had a couple of friendly regenerative farmers suggest that I get a either a tarp or a um, fitted sheet, an old fitted sheet, so I've got that to quickly chop and drop, basically. Um, but this is what I class as first generation, so when you buy a packet of seeds, it really sort of only um, is applicable if you've got hybrid seeds because of course man has crossbred to get the hybrid seed. So what happens is, this is first generation seed, so if this is a hybrid plant, I doubt it, but if it is, what will happen is next season we will see the uncross happen. And it's really quite interesting when you do see that. Um, and so what happens is you may get really short uh, plant with a lot of flower and a tall leggy thing with not many flowers so of course they've cross bred them cross pollinated them to produce this type of canola uh, we'll see what it happens uh, third generation is the best because of the epigenetics so what researchers have found is that when you plant anything um, there'll be some that struggle some that are, are good depending on the seed quality and just the genetics of the seed and third generation I'm finding to be the strongest so they're used to the climate they're used to the conditions whatever the conditions are um, and the seed is genetically strong and basically it's become a local and so that's one of the reasons why with the multi-species cover crops it's for me personally it's really important to keep the seeds because each year it will just get stronger and stronger because of that genetic side of things so I'm going to chop, chop, chop away. Just before I do chop, I just want you to have a look at all the leaf litter underneath. And also there is some other plants growing through. Um, but what is interesting, if we come down here a little further, is this is basically where I stood just about here when I threw the other extra bits of multi-species and if you look in this section you will see that they were the inoculated multi-species cover crops that I sowed as a secondary lot it was basically for the video so you'll see there's a lot more green under here This is the big bundle. You should be able to see, it looks pretty messy in the background there. There's still a fair few seed pods. However, you know, uh, well, that's quite a big <laughs> pile of seed pods anyway. It doesn't matter, they can reseed and they can continue. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I might get a, a bigger combine harvester next time. But anyway, I've done it and uh, before the rain, so all good. Just gotta dry it out now. And hey presto, I'll have my next season multi-species or canola for the multi-species.
just want to give you an update on the multi-species cover crop area. Last time we were here, um, the canola I was harvesting and I've still got that all collected for winter. Uh, but what I really want to show you and it's really interesting is I sowed multi-species cover crop. Now you know from the other videos that the cover crop was predominantly canola. There was a little bit of millet that came up, a few sunflowers, but nothing, nothing really to sort of give you any idea that I planted a multi-species. What's really interesting now is when I harvested, I allowed the, the canola crop to stay alive. So I topped them and the ones that were strong enough reflowered, fed the bees. Then what happened was I didn't put any animals in here, I just let it go into what we would class as a weed pit. So there are all different weeds in here. And the beautiful thing is they are my multi-species cover crop. So what I did was I had bare ground, I had no rain, nothing was growing. So I sowed some bird seed to try and get some cover in straight away. Now, what happened was that gave the chance, the soil, some life, so it was no longer bare, and then nature just took over. And I can hear bees, I can see butterflies, there'll be parasitic wasps in here, and there's all different, there's such a biodiverse range of, of everything in here, grasses and what we would class as weeds, which are just plants. Um, there's cobblers, pegs, there's, my one that I really, really hate, which is billy goat weed. Uh, but if I'd allowed it to just do its thing without giving it that boost of the multi-species, billy goat weed would have taken over in here and it would have been predominantly a monospecies. Um, but because I allowed, I gave it a chance, I covered the ground. Um, I also covered it with my compost, brought in the locals, the, the microbes that are used to being here and uh, then last night, of course, a horse escaped into here. She's only my, she's a yearling. So she got in here and she's done a bit of trampling, which is just perfect. So she's eaten, she's pooed, she's done everything she, she should have done um, without me even asking her to. And uh, I'll take you for a, a look around and you will see what I'm talking about, the, the diverse range of, of, of insect and plant life in here is really i'm so pleased with it so what i'm going to do is i'll take the fence down and just allow the horses then free range of it um as and when it's still going to be sort of a bit of a wild area because wild is good ecology and especially as 800 square meters is going to be planted out um, as my veggie patch it's good just to have a bit of a wild area for all the insects okay really pleased with this